the Ministry of Environment, Climate Change and Natural Resources through the Environment and Resilient Development Project in partnership with its implementing and sub-implementing partners on Wednesday commence a four-day planning retreat to develop the 2023 work plan and budget. The four-day retreat aims to assess the performance of the ministry and develop new plans to improve the implementation of the projects. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Mr. Ali Unjai, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Environment, Climate Change and Natural Resources, highlights the objectives of the 2023 planning retreat. Overall, the aim of the retreat is to assess performance, develop new plans, improve implementation. 2023 planning retreat has the following objective, which we are here, that is the reason why we are here this morning, to improve mutual accountability between government partners and all relevant stakeholders which I believe everybody is here today to assist in this endeavor, to develop the 2023 work plan and budget, and also to identify bottlenecks hindering successful implementation of the project plans and came up with solutions to some of the bottlenecks that we have been facing. The re relevant, <clears throat> the retreat approach is a nature to provide common understanding by all stakeholders in identifying priorities, gaps, and the resulting finding recommendation that emanates from the retreat can be developed into action plans for implement implementation by relevant stakeholders. PSNJ said the projects would build the capacity of game changers in the fight against climate change. I said the project's intervention logic in the underpins the acceleration of in inclusive, sustainable and green economic growth, supported by the robust gender sensitive resilience building approach that promotes sustainable management of the economy, natural resources, and the environment. The project will emphasize capacity building of national institutions and communities, focusing on identified game changer areas as multiply effects to promote growth, inclusiveness, and empowerment of women, youth, and the rural poor. This will be achieved through a focused skills development, employment creation, income generating activities and resilient building using innovative approach and technologies to promote green jobs, renewable energy, val value addition and other climate smart intervention for sustained livelihoods. Mr. Njai also highlighted some climate change issues that are affecting the Gambia. Majority of the Gambian, as you know, 70 to 80 percent of the population depend on the natural resources. That is, the goods and services provided by the aquatic biodiversity ecosystem and this exerts tremendous pressure on natural resources, which we are really facing at the moment, based thereby impacting negatively on the environmental resources. For example, our, our dependence of the population on fuel wood as the main source of domestic energy, over 80% of those contribution to deforestation, loss of biodiversity, land degradation, and loss of soil fertility, leading to the weak integration of environmental consideration into socio-economic development efforts. Mr. Njai says, despite facing some challenges, there are projects registered success in many areas. Despite some challenges faced by the projects over the years, such as the COVID pandemic, imagine and reimagine climate hazard, a number of key achievements were recorded by the projects at the Ministry of Environment. The successful completion of the newly constructed solar solar ice plants at the carton which with ice making machines, washing machines and fridges, establishing of horticultural garden with solar water pumping system, waiting said storage facility and toilet at Fony Jalokoto, provision of solar home system for the community of Charmin that is in Sierra, where I come from, provision of energy efficient cook stoves for women, skill training for young girls on solar install installation and food processing and preservation, pottery, sewing, and video production. According to research compiled by Climate Action Tracker, the Gambia is the only country where official government action, alongside its internationally supported targets, is compatible with keeping global average temperature rises below 1.5 Celsius since the pre-industrial era. Reporting for Kerfatu, I am Landin Sise.